Welcome to another edition of Planet Jazz and Gulf Islands Radio with uh, Rick Dennis or and Dave Gordon or Dave Gordon and Rick Dennis. And uh, today we have a tribute to uh, Jean-Luc Ponty, probably one of the most brilliant and innovative of all uh, violinists in the, in the Baroque uh, or jazz era. I, I think so. He, he came to prominence uh, in his home country, France, in the beginning. Did a bunch of recordings with Stefan Grappelli and, um, you know, sort of made his own way over there. But he came over here and he played on Frank Zappa's album, Hot Rats, which, as we both know, is a sort of a jazz album, and changed his style. The albums that we're going to be picking from today are albums that uh, come from that period, from uh, the early 70s up until the mid to um, late 80s. And we're going to start the show today. Tell them with what song, Rick? With, uh, well, we should mention that he originally started out as, as a classical violinist. After three years of playing with the symphony orchestra, he came to the States and uh, he became a, a, a jazz fan. And we're going to start off with, uh, from the CD, Upon the Wings of Music, this is Boeing, Boeing. And this is not the Broadway show. This is Boeing as spelled B O W I N G Boeing Boeing
that was Boeing Boeing by Jean-Luc Potty from his album Upon the Wings of Music. And we're going to switch over to the next album. He recorded two albums in 1975. That was the first one. The next one is a little bit more symphonic. Um, the people who are prog heads, the people who like progressive rock, often refer to this album as being symphonic. I don't quite hear that, but we'll see what you think. <laughs> and uh, we're at Gulf Islands Radio, of course, uh, streaming, uh, well, more or less live. We, we, we record this live, as you mm -hmm. can probably tell. Yep. This is from the uh, album... Uh, and they still had albums back in those days. Yes, and I, I got the, uh, the, the, the tune that I picked. It's from the album Aurora. And this is uh, Jean-Luc Ponty on GIR, Planet Jazz. And this is Renaissance.
1975. The album was called Aurora, and that song is a John Luc Ponty standard. It's called Renaissance. And a lot of important people believe in that album as well. Well, you know, I mean, I didn't... Uh that's one thing thing I like about uh, albums. They've got mm-hmm. the space to right. limit to uh, list all the players and without ruining your eyes. <laughs> well, it was quite a band that he had for this album. He had Tom Fowler from uh, who he played with in the Mothers of Invention. <clears throat> Jean Luc Ponty was uh, part of the crew that did Overnight Sensation. With, That's right. With he played Montana a number and, of, uh, of uh, famous uh, Zappa mm-hmm. albums. Yes, and uh, Norman Fearington on percussion and drums, Patrice Ruchin on keyboards, and Daryl Sturmer of Genesis on guitar. Wow! So quite a lineup there. Exactly, uh, Jean Luc Ponty. Uh, you have to accredit him on, on several levels. Uh, uh, for one, uh, for one, uh, on one level, he was uh, uh, he didn't really have any role models when he started out in the uh, in the uh, the jazz field. There were very few jazz violinists. Uh, Stephen Capelli, of course, and 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 Steph Smith, but very few role models. Joe Venuti. Yeah, and but very few role models in yes. in, in the uh, especially in the European scene. Yes, and uh, of course uh, Jean Luc Ponty went on to play with uh, John McLaughlin. As we're we're going to be talking a little bit more about John McLaughlin next week, but he was a big part of the second version of uh, the uh, Mahavishnu Orchestra. And it's, but we're gonna right now we're gonna play a tune from the next album, which was 1976. Imaginary Voyage, of course, and the track we've selected is New Country.
Uh, okay, that was uh, a new country from the 1976 album Imaginary Voyage. Uh, you know, and doing research on uh, Jean-Luc Ponty, I, uh, I learned that he uh, studied classical music at a conservatory in Paris. His mother was uh, apparently a violinist. And uh, the first jazz album I think he heard was Chet Baker with strings. And the first album he bought was by Benny Goodman. So he actually uh, had quite a journey as far as uh, his music was concerned. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next album we're going to hear is Enigmatic Ocean. Uh, the track we've selected is Mirage with Steve Smith on drums, who later would play with Journey, of all people. And and, and the bass player is Ralph Armstrong, who went on with Jean-Luc Ponty to join the Mahavishnu Orchestra right after this album. We're not going to play a lot of the epic, like the long songs that uh, Jean-Luc Ponty did over the years. We're going to stick with the shorter, snappier tunes, but just be aware of the fact that, you know, th uh, this guy's catalog... It's very, it's 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 varied. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Eclectic. Yes, it is. And so here we go. This is uh, from Enigmatic Ocean, Mirage.
You're listening to uh, a tribute to Jean-Luc Ponty on GIR Gulf Islands Radio from somewhere deep within the Salt Spring Island woods. And uh, let's say hello to our uh, our uh, listeners in Toronto and New Orleans La and to uh, <laughs> be part of our audience. Mm-hmm. Where would you go, uh, David? Well, uh, it's you know, when I <clears throat> saw that we had... A- few people listening to our show in new orleans i thought wow we must be doing something right so thank you very much for tuning in out there and enjoying the shows we're going to continue uh with these themes as the weeks go by i think rick and i are really enjoying digging into specific artists and coming out with something a retrospective you might call it a retrospective yes a fancy word so uh, you can go to facebook there's a link there and you can go to speaker.com Right, or you can look me up on uh, Facebook at uh, just David Gordon, and uh, Gulf Island Radio is another one of our Facebook pages. Or go on to Spreaker and, and just look up either or, and you'll come up with all of our shows sitting right there. And we have a blog now as well. Yeah, Rick has been uh, working feverishly on, on getting this information down on paper so that, you know, the the shows and the information go together and... Uh, we think that this type of music that we've been playing, it, it doesn't get a lot of coverage. So uh, well, I really appreciate the opportunity to be able to do this. So if you're, if you're thinking to yourself, you know, he didn't mention this and he didn't mention that, it, it, you know, hopefully it'll be on the blog. Our, our next uh, track is uh, from the album A Taste for Passion. Came out in 1979, back when they still had vinyl albums. It's called Sunset Drive, and it features a Jimmy Glazer on guitar. And you'll notice that on this track, uh, Monsieur Ponty <laughs> stretches out into keys and sequencers. Yeah, he really um, he broke a lot of ground in the 70s. Uh, now it's just, you know, it's so common. But he was using uh, sequencers and, and Moog synthesizers and other instruments in very interesting ways t- to accompany his violin work. I know because I saw him on stage doing it.
This is Gulf Islands Radio. Album, the art. Well, that's that's from the album Cosmic Messenger, and the song was called "The Art of Happiness." And I was just saying to Rick off air that there is something about Jean Luc's music that puts me in a very good mood. It's not silly or or syrupy or anything like that. It's just there's something about the way that he composes his music. It comes from a very positive place. Uh, we were mentioning, uh, well, you were mentioning, I think that uh, Jean Luc Ponty, unlike. 
his uh, teammate, his his sometime teammate, John McLaughlin, wasn't. Ver- he, he, he wasn't very spiritual in the sense Not overtly, that he no. that he broadcast, but but I think we both agree that you would have to be in touch with your spiritual side to perform some of this music, mm-hmm. compose and perform some of this music. And just look at the album and the song titles. I mean, right there it tells you something about where his head's at. A cosmic messenger. Yes, there you go. And uh, the next, the next tune that we have—that was two albums, by the way, from 1979. Oh, and, and I should mention uh, w- during the break we were talking about you actually saw Jean Luc Ponty and Masty Hall twice I did. during this era. I, I saw I saw this band with Ralph Armstrong on bass, and um, I do believe that was Peter Menu on guitar and Joachim Liviano. I, I, forgive me if I'm not saying the names right. But yeah, this this music was all done live in a fantastic setting. I saw him three times. I saw him once at Massey Hall with this band, like I say, and then I also saw him uh, with Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention doing the Overnight Sensation tour, where they were the oh, believe it or not the opening act for the Mahavishnu Orchestra, the original one. And then I also saw the second Mahavishnu Orchestra at Massey Hall again with Sean Luc Ponty on violin playing with John McLaughlin. So yes. I've been pretty lucky in in my life. I must say. Uh, what is the next tune we're going to hear? Uh, what what, well, what very is the next tune we selected? I don't have the playlist. In well, front of me. it's it's a very interesting song title. It's Demogomania. I don't know what it means. <laughs> it, it comes from again another great title for an album. It's called Civilized Evil, and you're listening to Planet Jazz.
1980 LP. I imagine it's available in compact disc as well, called Civilized Evil. That was uh, Demical Mania. And uh, Chris Rhyme and keyboards, Daryl Sturmer, guitar, Randy Jackson, bass. Randy Jackson, that name sounds familiar. <laughs> it should. He is the one of the former judges on American Idol. Uh, okay. And, uh, you know, Miles Davis had an album called Live Evil, but mm -hmm. uh, that was quite a different... Uh, well, there's you, you can really hear the Miles Davis influences in this music. You don't have to dig too deep. And I really appreciate the band that he put together for that particular album. I think there was some incredible people there. Daryl Sturmer on guitar, Joaquin Leviano again. And, of course, you you got to remember that Jean-Luc Ponty is doing a lot of those keyboard effects right then and there. And he was doing it on stage. I was just showing Rick how he looked on stage trying to play, well, and doing it very nicely, uh, playing violin and keyboard at the same time, reaching over with that one hand and just hitting the right keys. Just amazing stuff. Such great compositions. And we're going to get another one here from an album, I do believe it was the following year. Uh, let's see here. Uh, 1983, actually, this album came out. So it was a couple of years later. And a great band they assembled for this one, featuring George Duke on keys and Alan Holdsworth on uh, guitar. And this is the first time I've mentioned Alan Holdsworth on our show. And, and actually, he has been in, in, at, at the Cowichan Theater, now that I remember, as part of the touring uh, uh, Legends of Guitar series. No kidding. Series. You didn't go to that, did you? Uh, I went to several of them. They they come every year, and I, right. I believe I went, uh, I think Alan Holdsworth was on the uh, the bill one year. Well, former member of Tony Williams' Lifetime, former member of Soft Machine, uh, uh, former member of UK, that progressive rock band UK. He's been in so many groups. Anyway, I think this is one of his greatest performances here, and it's from the album called Individual Choice, and the song is called individual choice great video that goes with this by the way
Well, over the past uh, hour, Planet Jazz has featured tribute to Jean-Luc Ponty. And, of course, uh, you know, as you explained earlier, David, we haven't played any of the longer tracks. I think we could we could have, uh, if we ha- we played some of the longer tracks, we'd have a much <laughs> longer uh, episode of Planet Jazz. <laughs> it would be hours long, especially if we play my favorites, because... All of these albums that we've taken little snippets from have great, great tunes on them. And each one of the albums that I drew from today, you could go out and buy the CD, and I guarantee you, you're going to enjoy it. Uh, well, we're coming to the end of the, uh, the, the the program. Next week, we have uh, one of Jean-Luc Ponty's uh, teammates, former teammates, uh, John McLaughlin. And like John McLaughlin... Uh, Jean-Luc Bonte is still touring today. His latest project is a, uh, a tour and record with uh, former Yes lead vocalist John Anderson, the Anderson Ponte Band. You know, one thing that uh, that strikes me over the past hour is is the fact that uh, Jean-Luc Ponte always had exquisite uh, taste in his backup musicians. For example, on this on this album, which is Open Mind from 1984, we have George Benson on guitar, Rayford Griffin on drums, and and the great Chick Corea on synths. And we should also mention, David, that uh, uh, he was also, Jean-Luc Ponty was also uh, a member of Return to Forever. What a great resume this man has. Yes, he was on the latest tour where they did they did the album uh, Return of the Mothership. That's if you wanted to hear how he worked out. And, of course, the guitar on that album was taken over by Frank Cambali. He took the um, the seat from uh, Al Miola just for that tour. But anyway, I want to say goodbye and thanks for listening. Sure do enjoy playing this kind of music for you, as Rick was just saying. We don't hear this stuff anywhere else. And I like to think that uh, we can get it out there, enjoy it, and you will too. <laughs> we'll catch you next time with John McLaughlin.